Good afternoon, everybody. Like Amanda mentioned, my name is Thomas Mack. I do own a business in Simsbury. In June, we will be celebrating our seventh anniversary there. It's really hard to believe it's been seven years already. We are very much a niche interior design business where we focus on one thing, and that is color. And we only carry two brands in our entire showroom, and that is Annie Sloan out of Oxford, England, and Farrell and Ball out of Dorset, England. Is everybody familiar with the two brands? Never heard of them. Really? Oh, wait, we're gonna be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, sitting here. <laughs> so everything that you see as we go through Landers House, and we're gonna talk a little bit about paint and Landers House and the process that we went through. The reason we use Farrell and Ball and we're continuing to do so for all the exhibitions throughout the museum, it is a brand that they, they've been around for over 75 years now, made in Dorset, England, and many of the world's best museums around the world do use Farrell and Ball, and there are several reasons for it. Number one, it is actually the first company in the world that went from oil-based to 100% waterborne paint. They were the first company to do it. So all of their paints are waterborne and they're not a latex. There are no plastic resins in any of their paints. They are known for their great depth of color and it does come in many different finishes. When you paint with a ferrule and ball or if you've been up to Poetry of Nature, upstairs all the Hudson River School paintings, it's very flat, very velvety, but there is a great depth of color to it, and that's why so many museums use Farrell and Ball. So we'll be talking about that today. Um, it is eco-friendly, ultra low VOC, so even when we were painting the galleries for Poetry of Nature, the rest of the second floor of the museum did not smell like paint. Question. Sure, and please ask questions as we go through. I love it to be I'm very a little confused. Is this about color used to paint in museums specifically? It, it really more specifically for Landers House. But then in oh. homeowner, this is used in homeowners' yeah, sure. homes as, there we go. Okay, but the talk is focused on what's done here. You got it, correct. It's really going to be focused on the process we went through to do Landers House. But you will see these colors as we go through the museum. You guys are going through different exhibitions. The colors are used there as well. Are these available in big stores or big box stores? Only, not in big box stores. Okay. Um, one really popular place in Simsbury. <laughs> small but mighty. <laughs> small but mighty, that's right. Okay. Uh, so we do carry all of it right there. Yes, okay. yes. So with Landers House, um, like Amanda had mentioned, I have been with the museum since early 2018 when we were starting to plan the Georgia O'Keeffe exhibition. Everybody remember Georgia O'Keeffe? Yeah. That was actually the first time I started working with the museum. Um, and now we collaborate with them on all the upcoming exhibitions. So we are current, right now we are working on the June exhibition that will follow Poetry of Nature. Um, so always a fun process, but it takes several months to get prepared for which colors and which finishes we'll be doing for each exhibition. So when they approached me about redoing Lander's House, we met with the architectural team and the museum staff to really understand what this space would be used for. And that really is the first step when we do any type of color consultation, either for a commercial space or for a residential space, what we do first is find out what the space will be used for. So when we met with them, we learned that it will be multifunctional for the public. It will be a member's area to be able to come in, sit, relax, read. People can rent it out for meetings, banquets, bridal showers, wedding receptions, especially because we have Walnut Hill Park right here out looking out all of these windows here. Plus, we have the maker studio where our projects would be going on. So that's always the most important thing to know. Even if I were to come into your home to do a color consultation, before we begin talking about color, I always want to know how that room is going to be used. So we have many different uses going on within these spaces here, and then obviously the library as well. Anybody have any questions so far? 
Go ahead. Did it make a difference that um, you know they're making a big transformation in other aspects of the space for you to not know exactly what the final result was going to be when you were talking initially? That is a really good question. We did have many meetings and meeting with the arch architectural team, and as time went, on, actually in the beginning when we were starting to look at colors and finishes, and I know you're all going to gasp, but the original plan, we were actually going to paint all of the woodwork. Oh, good. But, <laughs> yeah. 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 but it's because it did not look like this. It ended up all getting restored, which is why it looks so beautiful now, but it was not in good condition. So originally we were going to spray all of it. Oh, it was really dark. It was really dark. It was faded in some areas. Uh, there were some pieces missing that had to be matched. Um, so all, but all of this was all going to be sprayed at one point. So then, as the meetings went on, and we understood what parts um, they were going to preserve and restore, then knowing what furniture they were going to bring in, the colors changed very often throughout the process, for sure. Um, and then we also had to consider the different finishes, which we're going to talk about in a moment as well. But initially, though, all of this was going to get painted, and that really kind of changed as time went on when we understood that it all could be restored, and it should be restored. So and I, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. The second thing we want to consider is finishes. And as we go through the different spaces, as we start walking through, how often do you go into a public building or an apartment building, I see it quite a bit, maybe a doctor's office, and you see a wall, and all the wall is all scuffed up. Yeah. Right, yeah. you can all think that. My own house. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk after this. <laughs> what is the reason for it being all scuffed up? Usually machinery and just offices. Could be, yeah. any other reason? Thin paint. Could be thin paint. Oh, yeah. Anything yeah. else? It really comes down to not the right finish on it. So it's not, it can be the paint, especially if it's not very well called paint. Um, but it really comes down to the finish. If the finish is too flat, that's when you're going to get scuffed marks. So you're, as we go through these spaces, you're going to see a flatter finish here because you're not touching the walls. Where we had to make some compromises in the next room with the blue because we know that people are going to be having drinks in there. The color goes all the way down to the floor. Um, so we really had to consider that. Same as the hallway versus in here. So we always take a look at all of our colors are a very, very flat 2% sheen. They're a very chalky finish. When you're upstairs, poetry of nature, all the walls are this very, very flat finish, but it is delicate. So we did that where we could, including on the ceiling in this room here, that breakfast room green color is a very flat chalky finish. Any area, the hallway, the blue area is all, we had to go a little bit shinier, just a little bit, it's a 7% sheen to it, but it is scuff proof and washable. So we could do this one in your house though. <laughs> So that it would make a big difference. So we did have to consider that. Then we also needed to take a look at, anybody want to take a guess, the next big thing to consider when you're looking at color? Light? You got it. Light becomes then the most important thing to consider after knowing what's going to go on in the space, and how it's going to be used, is really looking at direction of windows as well as what artificial lighting is going to be used. So we need to understand how color will change when it's a north facing or a south facing, an east facing or west facing light. We needed to understand that. Um, and also what type of window treatments would be on here as well. So again, color kept changing, knowing what windows would be opened up. Um, so it did change quite a bit throughout the, the long process. Any questions so far? There is no art in here. There is no art in here now that we were just talking about that a couple minutes ago. At the end of the process, before my guys came in to do the painting in here, it, it, 
do you recall what this used to be? It used to be a grass cloth up here. Does anybody remember that from before the renovation? Oh, sure. The old grass cloth. And these are all plastic. Most of them are plaster walls. So my guys removed all the grass cloth, repaired the plaster, but we did know that a picture rail was going to go up in all of these spaces as well. Uh, there's a couple of reasons right now that it's not up, but eventually there will be artwork that can be hung around all of the walls in here. And we did it in a section of that space as well. Yes. What other questions do you have so far? But we did paint it so that you can barely see. It's just really more of a line that you see. Any other questions so far? I had a friend who um, inherited an old home on Peach Island. Okay. And brought in an architect who said, what color do you want to achieve? And because there were many different planes in the house and the light was coming in, from a funky direction. The architect suggested that each of the planes be painted a different color so that they would all look the same, a different tone. That's interesting. Yeah, I wondered if you had heard of that. I haven't heard of that, but it does bring up a good point. Um, let's see if I can find my color card. When, how many of you have gone to a paint store looked at a chip and made your decision just from the chip of paint. Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> so here's a couple of things to keep in mind, and it is how we do everything here with the museum, if it was for Lander's house or for an exhibition. The way the human eye works, the smaller a sample, like the, these are actual painted chips, but the smaller the sample is, the darker it is going to appear to your eye. So you want to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So we always, in our showroom, we always, always recommend, once we talk to somebody about color, it is worth getting a sample pot of the color. And we did that many times over when we did Lander's house. What most people are doing, everybody has Amazon boxes at home. Cut the side of an Amazon box if you don't want to paint it right on the wall. Make yourself a big swatch of it. Because circling back to your question is with all of the organic pigment in Farrell and Ball paint, the color is going to change all throughout the day. So it will look different in morning light, midday, and afternoon light. So you want to make sure that you, and we always say to every customer that comes in, live with that color for a couple of days. We always say, get up in the morning, take a look at it in the morning light, look at it in the afternoon, look at it in the early evening, and definitely look at it at night when it's dark outside and you have your artificial lights on inside to make sure that you're going to be happy with that color and the way that it will look in all areas of the room. Again, because of all that organic pigment, it is going to change considerably. So you want to keep that in mind. So my team and I, we did big samples of all of the different colors throughout this space um, to make sure that everybody here at the museum and the architectural team all approved of the colors that we were choosing. And we do that for any of the exhibitions here as well. What other questions do you have? So it's a great, great lead in. So for this room, and then we'll get up and kind of walk around a bit because there's reasons behind each of the colors that we chose. For this room, it had changed several times. And then when we finally knew, once we knew that these were not going to be painted, it took a long time before they could be restored and we did not know what the final color of the wood was going to be. The color that I chose for this is called Dovetail. We did not want to distract from the woodwork because it's beautiful, right? So we did not want to overpower it. And we knew that we were going to do a stronger color in that room, and there's a reason for that. So I wanted a neutral, but I wanted a neutral that would work with the wood. So this is called Dovetail. It is a red-based neutral. It's that warm red undertone that is working with the wood. It works with the fireplace too. And this was also 
yeah. uncovered much later too. So I remember running back to her to make, make sure that yeah. dovetail didn't work with this and it certainly yeah. does. What else do you notice about this room aside from dovetail on the walls? Did you use the rug at all, the white from the rug here to? I did not. They did, okay. No. I knew it was coming, Sometimes but yeah. I really focused much more on the architectural elements versus the furniture. Is the ceiling the same color? You got it, Megan. You are correct. So in here, in a couple of the rooms that we did, and we do it a lot with our residential projects now as well, we do the wall and the ceiling same color, same finish. Especially if you have a room in your home that is a smaller room or a low ceiling, if you do the wall and ceiling same color, same finish, it actually gives the illusion of more space. Really? It's just the opposite of what you would think. Mm -hmm. Because when you naturally walk into a room, your eye goes to where the wall ends and the ceiling starts. So by eliminating that, you're creating the illusion of more space. So we did do that same color in here as well. I remember reading an article about um, in America, well, you, you know, when you go to Europe, like the ceiling, so many of them are ornate and all this hand painted stuff, and that in America, the ceiling is the forgotten wall. Correct. Yeah, and often <laughs> here called the fifth wall because yes. people really do forget about it. Popcorn. But very often, um, some of our clients, we've even done a wallpaper. In here, well, you'll actually see a wallpaper. We actually did it for Landry's house. I always forget about that little spot that we did. Um, and then you'll see in here, what I often like to do in projects, and it worked out beautifully here, even though we only had a little bit to paint in there, which is really just the ceiling. If you have a great exterior, a great yard, some great view, obviously here we have this beautiful park. We always like to try to bring some part of that natural color to the inside. So in here, knowing that we could only do the ceiling, this is called breakfast room green, but it really kind of mimics the green colors outside, especially during the summer. So we always try to incorporate a little bit of nature inside whenever we can, especially if there is a really good view for it. Thomas, I love that the sprinkler head works. The yes, and then, <laughs> correct. and then there were certain things, obviously, because it's a commercial building, so um, like the sprinkler heads obviously had to stay, so we painted those the same color just to kind of conceal them a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, but we also did a very flat finish in there as well. No need to have any sheen to it because you don't need the durability. What do you think of that little pop of color? Just a nice little surprise as you walk yeah. in. Yes. I'm surprised to hear that the ceiling is the same color because from this area, it looks so much darker. I'm so glad you brought well, that up. that's what I was exactly. thinking. I would have never said that. And that is the same thing. Even if you use this paint in your house, again, it's yeah. all that organic pigment mm -hmm. and it is going to look different in different light, in different areas of the room, as well yeah. as at different times during the day. Yeah. yeah. Some people would not even realize the ceiling actually yeah. is the same color yeah, as the wall. It doesn't look it. Yeah. 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 And we did it in, I guess we did it in every room of Landers House. Huh. We did that. It's just more, more subtle depending on the color that we use. Yeah. What other questions about these two spaces before we move on? All right, let's take a tour. We'll go over this one. conversations about this space and truly we had to make some compromises in here all of these walls and the ceiling they are the original plaster so we did my team and I did my team did repair all of the plaster elements but we knew that this would be a heavily used room we do have an area over there where people will have their drinks coming right out, out of the bar area 
And what I didn't want to do is have a paint finish on the wall that the museum is going to be very unhappy with six months after that, after we got done with the project. So here is the compromise. You need a bit more durability for this space, but with durability comes sheen. With sheen comes, you see the imperfections much better than with the flat finish. So you can see, especially with the way some of the lights are shining on the walls, some of the imperfections, which I like in a home that was built in 1910, like the Landers house. But it is a bit shinier than I would prefer, but we had to weigh the pros and cons of doing a higher sheen finish in here to make sure that the museum has the durability that they need in a space like this. We also wanted this to have a very special feel to it. Again, thinking wedding events, bridal showers, meetings in here. So we wanted this room to have a very different feel than the room that you just came from. Again, we did walls, ceiling, same color, same finish. This is called egg blue, and it does have a green undertone to it, but I felt that this blue color works beautifully with all of this woodwork that we have here and for the mantle as well. We did also do a little trick to the eye as well. The, another reason why we did the ceiling the same color if you notice the molding, the crown molding, it does not go all the way around the room. That's why we did that, correct? So if we did the crown molding in a different color, or even a different sheen level, it would bring your eye to the crown molding. And as we were looking at it, it all looked great there, but you don't have it here. So then we decided to hide it. What are your thoughts about this space? I love the color too. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I really do. And it should have a really warm, cocooning feeling to it. No, it's different wood because it's darker. Uh, not different wood, different um, finish on it. It's a bit darker. Did you redo this too? This is all restored, including all around the windows, was all restored as well. Yes. So we definitely wanted to make sure that none of that was touched at all, but just choosing colors that would work with all of the, the beautiful finishings that Landers mm -hmm. House is known for. How different would it look if you did the lower sheen on the ceiling? Because then your eye is going to see the difference and you're going to look up. We didn't necessarily want, we didn't necessarily want you to look up, mm -hmm. one, because of the crown molding difference, but two, and it's a bit too sunny right now, all the focus really should be to the beautiful view going outside. So I don't want to draw more attention up. I just wanted that good feeling, but that your eye can really go to the beautiful view of Walnut Hill Park. What other questions do you have in this space? Did you pick the window dressings also? I did not. That was the, a good question. That was the architectural team. The architectural team picked the window treatments, the lighting, and the furniture. Did they ask you, though, about what color you felt would come on it? We really worked in partnership. Every time I would come here to the museum, we would get an update of what furniture they were purchasing, what ideas we had for colors, and then we would present them with a big sample store. So it was very, very collaborative all throughout the process. I think we were, this was actually one of the first colors decided very, very early on. We knew that we wanted a moody, but updated color for this space. It was really the other rooms that came much later. Any other questions for this space? It is, a, it, it is actually one of the most popular blue colors. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah. You're right, with that same green undertone to it. Yep, absolutely. So there are plans for putting some spectacular paintings there? There will be, and they'll rotate over That's time as true. well. And you can see the chair rail. My guys painted it um, in here as well, but the, the, not the chair rail, the picture rail is all around this space as well for artwork to go up. All right, come on, we'll go to the bar. The bar's not open, but we'll go to the bar.
Yes, everybody's catching the little surprise we have. This is my favorite. I've never noticed it before. Yeah. That's so funny. I love that. Isn't that such a little surprise? It's like putting jewelry on. I know, it's great. Floating is also the outdoor. Exactly, exactly. So we knew that obviously coming into the bar area here, we wanted this to be sophisticated, again, a bit moody and very updated. So this color here, ceiling, walls, cabinetry, and trim is all called down pipe. Can look gray, can look green, can look blue, depending on the lighting. And then what we did is choose a ferrule and ball wallpaper. And all the wallpapers are made in Dorset, England, but we chose a pattern that, again, resembled nature, but worked with the downpipe here. And all those wallpapers are actually painted with their paint so that we have that installed. So as you come in the door, you look up and you just you get that nice little surprise like you do with that breakfast room green that we did on the ceiling of the other space. What are your thoughts on this color? Is this different from that? It is. Yeah. yeah. It's grayer? Gray, yeah, completely different color. This is more of a gray lead color. What was your description? Moody and updated? Moody, updated, sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we also wanted to be sure that we did a color, chose a color that works with the woodwork mm -hmm. in here as well as the flooring. Is it unusual to put wallpaper on the ceiling? Not anymore. Oh. No, mm. no, it's done quite often now. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody else had that. mentioned, I think it was Megan that had mentioned it, over in Great Britain, obviously a lot is done on the ceiling. Um, we're seeing it more here in the U.S. now. It's so either painted a different color or painted rather than a white, painted a color, mm -hmm. or doing some sort of treatment like that. Even uh, one of the Farallon Ball show houses a couple of years ago up near Boston um, had ceilings done with wallpaper. Mm -hmm. You just have to choose a pattern that's not so directional so that it makes sense mm -hmm. on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And I like doing, to do it in a small area like that. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the microwave. So in the library, who can guess what our inspiration had to be for the library? Yes. Chandelier. We knew that, and the chandelier actually was not in this room, but we knew, right. Do you know where it was? Uh, in the front room, so um, the one on the left. Okay. Is that right? I believe so. Yes. I believe so. Um, but we knew that it was going to be put back into this space, so we used the chandelier as our inspiration for the library. Anybody want to take a guess on how many different finishes that we have in this space for the wall color? The woodwork and the wall look different. They are. Any other place? Ceiling. 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 We have yeah. the ceiling. Wow. And then we also have right behind yeah. Megan there. Yeah. That, yeah. So there are three different finishes here. This color is actually called broccoli brown. <laughs> it is a color inspired by nature. It is part of the London Natural History Museum collection of colors um, in collaboration with Farrell and Ball. But we thought this color in different sheens, and we'll talk about that in a moment really worked to highlight the chandelier that really should be the focal point of the space. So here we were able to do, again, like we do in the galleries, that very, very flat finish, a state emulsion, chalky finish, delicate, it's only wipeable. But on the woodwork, the window trim, we did a state eggshell, a 20% sheen, a typical trim finish like you would do in your home. 
And then there is a modern eggshell on the bookcases that was sprayed on. Weren't you concerned about getting fingerprints as far as washable? It, it, no, this one's actually, it's a good question. It's not washable. This one's wipeable. This is completely washable. But knowing that at, at most times there'll be a piece of art up here, I was not too concerned about that. I was really hoping for the library to have that very, very flat finish in here as well. But any of the window trim and obviously the mantle, you can see. And also keep in mind too, in, in our showroom, we have this really interesting wall. Oh, it's actually all done in hag blue that we just left. It's one wall, just a small wall from floor to ceiling, but it's done in all eight different finishes. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how a finish affects the color. And people say all the time, that's not all the same color, but it actually is because you can even see here, even though this is both broccoli brown, going from a 2% sheen to a 20% sheen does affect the color actually looks in this case a little bit darker okay let's move on into the hallway area here So what color would you say this is? Pale gray. Pale, oh, good eye. Yeah. Now this color is called blackened. So we wanted a neutral color for the hallway area because we wanted this to be more neutral so that you got surprised as you walk into each of the different spaces. But I already knew we were going to do a very pure white, which we'll talk about in a moment for the Maker Studio. This color is actually called blackened. It is a white with a drop of gray added into it. We did a higher sheen knowing that this is a main hallway here, so we needed it to be scuff proof and washable. Same, and, and it's kind of a tight area, so I did do the same color on the walls and ceiling in here as well. And then the woodwork is the same color and a higher sheen. So this is all blackened. Blackened with a durable finish on it. And you can see, yeah, I mean, we did this quite a while. There are no scuff marks or anything on the walls. No, I just feel that blackened, blackened, what? Blackened. Blackened? Blackened. Oh, okay. Blackened. blackened. Is there a different color along here or is that an illusion? No, it, should, it must be the shadowing. It's all the same. But you can even see within a small spacious way the light hit it, the color does change so much. And then we move into the maker's studio. different ways to pick them. And it is always tricky to know which one. And that's when we have to go back to the lighting, how it's going to be used. We knew early on what this space would be used for, and I didn't want anything to, to distract from any artwork or activities that would go on in here. This is a particular white called All White, meaning it has no undertone at all. Most times when you think of a clean, crisp white, it might be a bit cold, a bit sterile. This one is not. Cold, sterile whites have blue undertone added to them. This has no undertone. So it is just a warm, not even a warm, it's just a clean white. Neutral. And here, very, very much neutral. And that's why it's called all white. There's just, there's no undertone at all to it to make it too warm or too cold. 
Well, that way it doesn't compete with the artwork. You got it. Exa that's, that's exactly why we did We didn't want anything to compete with what would be going up here. We knew that this was going up. We knew that we had the TV here and all the other artwork mm -hmm. happening. So we just wanted it to be as neutral as possible. So all of this, again, knowing that kids would be in here, we did 7% here. Same color, but you can see how it changes, even within whites. And then we did a 20% sheen in here. Ceiling's done the same with 7%. Is it a trend these days to have the woodwork the same color? We're, that's a good question. We're doing that more and more often now. We're really moving away from white ceilings and white trim. Mm -hmm. Some people, like if you want to keep that traditional look, obviously we do that. But more often, we're doing the wall and trim, same color, different sheen. So you get that subtle difference. Mm -hmm. Or even going a little bit darker on the trim than on the wall, kind of the reverse of what, what we're used to thinking. Mm -hmm. In some cases for ceilings, that people don't want to be too dramatic with it, they'll cut it with some white, whatever the wall color is, and just do a lighter version on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. But really getting away from white ceilings, white trim. What other questions do you have? What are your thoughts about the colors? Very cool. That feels good. 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 I'm just looking at the taping. Is that the taping that came with them? I just saw that too. Have we got lunch? I'm going to have to get my guns <laughs> back here. I, I just saw that I, as I, I was standing that here. We never know why. Yeah. yeah. We can get that fixed easily. What other questions do you have? Um, this wasn't an issue here, but if you did have a popcorn ceiling yes. that's currently white and you wanted to change it, do you really need to remove the popcorn? You really do. Yeah. And my team does that a lot now. It is a messy, messy process. You know, it, it was a terrible trend back in the day. <laughs> um, but we are removing those a lot now, just having a nice, clean yeah. ceiling. Very often, sometimes you can paint over it, but if you do, a lot of the popcorn starts to fall off. So mm -hmm. it's worth the investment to just get rid of that popcorn, mm -hmm. skin coat the ceiling, prime it, and paint it. I had yeah. a friend who had a mouse problem. Because at night they went along the ceiling and used <laughs> some popcorn. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> what other questions can I answer for you? And usually when I do a consultation, I literally bring this entire big deck here. Feel free to take a look through this. But this is what I take, and this is what I use here at the museum when we're doing an ex um, exhibition. We literally have this entire thing downstairs in the basement so that we can pull out any of the colors that we need. These are our current colors, and then these are all the archived colors that we use. So feel free to take a look at these. Um, and then we do have goodie bags for everybody that are right on the table in the library.